Welcome back to DIY My Way. Recently, I changed the way I fuel my tractor, so I want to share that with you today. Way back in video number five, I shared how I fueled my tractor using a siphon hose. This approach worked well and could be left unattended as long as the tractor's tank was below one quarter full. It also required that I sit the can on top of the tractor for the siphon to work, but it took six minutes to fill. I even upgraded from the original hose to this one inch hose, which worked great and even faster than this one did for a while, until it didn't. It just stopped uh, working right. It would siphon part of the way and then leave a lot in the tank. And for a while there, it was doing it perfectly. I don't know if it's a localized change in the laws of physics here on the property or whatever, but quit working, so I had to do something different. I decided it was time to get a fuel transfer pump, so I searched online for options. I wanted something I could just stick in the top of the fuel can with the fuel can sitting on the ground, so this popular style of pump caught my attention. However, most of these only had a very short hose which wouldn't reach my tractor's fuel tank from the ground. Also, most of them were powered by D-sized batteries and I preferred either a rechargeable batteries or 12 volt powered so I could run the pump from the tractor battery. I should mention that Harbor Freight has a very affordable and popular battery power transfer pump, but it doesn't meet my requirements. I've got a link to it in the video description in case it meets your needs. I chose the TerraPump AC-DC one that really works on 12 volts, but it comes with an AC adapter, but also works on 12 volts. The TerraPump model TRE03-TXL has the features I'm looking for, including a decent 2.9 gallons per minute transfer rate, a generous 10 foot long hose. It's powered by an AC adapter or 12 volts directly from the vehicle battery. However, as you'll see shortly, I'll modify the 12 volt connector for easy hookup to my tractor's battery. It has a locking adjustable flow control lever. Its intake tube extends from 15 to 20 inches. And it's priced at $81.95 on Amazon, which is a lot more than most other brands, but it met my requirements. There's a link to it in the video description. To modify the 12 volt connector cable, I bought a couple of standard two pin automotive quick connectors, but I only need one of them for now. First, I strip the ends off the quick connector. Then cut the alligator clips off the 12 volt cable and strip the ends of the wires. Next, I slip a piece of heat shrink tubing over the whole quick connector cable followed by two smaller pieces over each wire. I twist the two black wires together, then solder them. And I repeat for the red wires. Then I slide the heat shrink tubing over the wires and shrink them down with my heat gun. I find that the larger piece of heat shrink tubing is too small to go over the smaller pieces. So I cut it off and feed a bigger piece into place. And shrink it down. There, done. Time to test it all out and fuel Big Orange. The connector I added fits the connector for my smart battery charger.
I set the fuel can on a block of wood to put it at an angle so I can pump out as much fuel as possible. I set the fuel lever in the full flow locked position. I already love having the long hose. Stick the nozzle in the tank, plug up the power cable, and turn the pump on. Now let's see how long it takes to pump in five gallons. Let's speed this up a bit. I make sure the intake tube is at the bottom of the fuel can, and it is. That's it. The fill time for 5 gallons was 2 minutes and 12 seconds, which calculates to 2.27 gallons per minute. Less than spec, but I'm not surprised. Most specs assume the pump is pumping laterally instead of a few feet uphill. Like any pump, the higher it has to pump fuel, the lower the GPM, but I can live with that. I hold the pump up in the air to get the last fuel into the tank. Just a little fuel left in the can, so I pour it in the tank. I drape the pump across the shelf with both ends of the can so any remaining fuel can drip out. Oops, I need to lock the nozzle in the open position. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please click that like button, leave a comment, and by all means, please subscribe. If you want to know when I post new videos, click that little bell. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.